I'll be showing you how to take a base model you've trained and convert it into a chat format through fine tuning. Let's get started with chat fine tuning. First question to ask is why would you chat fine tune? Well, if you've pre-trained a model on a bunch of text, the model's gonna have difficulty knowing when to stop. And furthermore, you want to familiarize the model with more of a chat type format if it's used to just outputting paragraphs or essays worth of text. To appreciate chat fine tuning, we're gonna cover a few topics. First off, I wanna talk about the role of start and stop tokens. Then I'll talk about some different chat formats. There are a few different ones that are commonly used out there, Guanaco, uh, Llama2, and ChatML. I'll then show you a demo of fine tuning for chat, and I'll go through step-by-step -step a script that will take a base model and convert it into a format for chat fine tuning. And I'll highlight how the examples before fine tuning are pretty bad for chats and they're pretty good after the fine tuning. And last off, we'll have a few pro tips. So let's start with a basic example here of a question uh, where we ask a language model, say, who are you? And the language model starts to respond by saying something like, hello, my name is Ronan. Um, I live in Dublin. Now, the language model could just keep on going here. So the question is, how does it know when to stop? And the answer we have is using special tokens, which we call end of sequence or beginning of sequence. So typically we have beginning of sequence or BOS tokens, and we have end of sequence or EOS tokens. And a common choice for a beginning of sequence token is S, and a common end of sequence choice in those, uh, in those brackets is slash forward slash S. And so what we do during pre-training is any uh, sentence that we have or any passage that we have, we will put in a beginning of sequence token, uh, just like this. And at the end, we'll put in an end of sequence token. And what this habituates the model to is when it gets to some end of a piece of text, it's going to put in and emit this end of sequence token. And then during generation, when we ask the question, who are you? The model is going to respond with greetings. My name is Ronan. I live in Dublin. And it will respond with the end of sequence token. And at that point, we can ask it to stop generating. Now, if we don't ask it to stop generating, it might continue, uh, for example, like this. It might blab on and say something like, why are you here? for example. But because we detect this end of sequence token being returned, we're simply going to stop calling the model recursively. And so we're not going to ask the model to keep generating beyond this end of sequence token. Now, just a further note, if you look at the model, say, Llama2, it uses a tokenizer that has a vocabulary size of uh, 32,000 tokens. So you can think of that as 32,000 words or subwords that are used to represent all possible responses. And actually within that vocabulary, uh, there is the definition of this beginning of sequence token. Um, it's actually token number one in the vocabulary. And then there's also definition of an end of sequence token, which is token number two. So effectively the model, when it gets to the end of a sentence, it will um, it should emit an end of sequence token, which is token number two. And when we detect token number two being emitted, we'll just stop calling the model recursively. And so this is how you stop a model from blabbing on. You have to pre-train it, um, or at least fine tune it with these uh, special tokens, beginning of sequence and end of sequence. And then you simply detect the end of sequence to know when to stop calling the model recursively. Let's say you have a base language model that emits end of sequence tokens. So it tells you when it wants to stop. It wants you to stop getting it to generate. But we want to go one step further and fine tune that model so that it responds well in a chat format. I'm going to show you an example of how that's done using a Guanaco chat style. I'll then go through some other chat styles that you can use also. Let's take a simple example here. Who are you? as a question, and the answer I'll give is I'm Ronan, I live in Dublin. And let's assume the model also 
has been pre-trained with these beginning of sequence and end of sequence tokens. So when the assistance response is produced, it will emit at the end this end of sequence token. Now we're going to go one step further and add some structure to the text to indicate that this is going to be a question and to indicate that this is the assistance answer. So what I'll do here is I'll put in human and down here, put in assistant. And now if we pre-train, or rather not pre-train, if we fine tune, so if we provide a relatively small number of examples to the model with this kind of format, when it sees human and then it sees assistant, it's going to then respond in a way that's more reflective of this chat format. There are a few different styles in which you can do the chat fine tuning. The one I just showed you is like Guanaco. So it uses a human for the very start and it uses assistant for the end. Then there's Llama. Llama uses inst, which is short for instruction for the start. And it uses forward slash inst for the end of the user's input, or you can think of it as the start of the assistance input. Now, importantly, these here are not tokens in the vocabulary. So you'll remember that the end of sequence, the S, the forward slash S, in the Llama vocab, that's token two, and the start of sequence is token one. These are typically not registered into the vocabulary. They're simply pieces of text that are added and the model becomes accustomed to seeing these pieces of text, but they're not things that we need to automatically detect um, because the main thing we need to detect is the end of a sequence, which is already handled by the end of sequence token. The last chat format I want to bring your attention to is ChatML or Chat Markdown Language. It's a format that's used by OpenAI and this is a little bit different than the Guanaco or the Llama approach because both the user and the assistance response here are wrapped by tokens that are defined in the tokenizer and in the model. So you have user backslash n, which is not defined in tokenizer, but that and the user's input is all wrapped within I am start and I am end. And the assistant backslash n followed by the assistant message is also wrapped in I am start and I am end. And these are actually tokens that are defined in the vocabulary. Next, I'm going to show you how to fine tune a model for chat. And I'm going to do it using the LAMA2 format. So before we start, I'll give a very quick manual example of how the tokenization works and how the prompt prompts um, are formatted for that chat fine tuning. Here we have the question, who are you? And again, the answer, I'm Ronan. I live in Dublin. Llama 2, the base model, will already emit that end of sequence token because it's been pre-trained with sequences that have that end of sequence token. And when we tokenize, we will include the beginning of sequence token right before the questions that we input. The way to think about fine tuning here is that we take this structure here and we want to convert it so that it has some extra tokens. It should have a beginning of sequence token here, inst, and it should have an end of sequence token here, which is inst like this. This here says beginning of instruction, then we have the instruction, and then we have the end of the instruction here. Then we have the response, and then we have the end of sequence token. So the idea of chat fine tuning is to prepare lots of examples that have this format including the text for inst, um, including the text here for end of the instruction. And when we train the model or fine tune the model on lots of those instructions, it will then get more accustomed to a chat format like this here. For the purpose of this video, what I'm going to do is take a base Llama model, the 7B model, and I'm going to fine tune it so that it takes the chat format. So it's going to provide the same type of question and response that is possible with the LAMA2 chat format. The data set that I'm going to use is based on Tim Detnermer's Open Assistant. This is an open source data set of questions and answers. You can see here, um, if we scroll in, there's a human question about the term monopsomy. And then there's an assistant response here to that question. And then again, there's a human response. 
So you can see this is formatted into the Guanaco style. Um, it does not have end of sequence tokens in it. It also does not have the inst, which is suitable for the Llama format. So what I've done is I've taken that data set and you can find this data set for yourself. I'm going to just look it up here. Trellis Open Assistant Llama Style. This is the very same data set as Tim Detmer's filtered data set, but I've replaced, as you can see here, the human with inst. I've replaced assistant with uh, forward slash inst. And you'll also see that I've included the end of sequence token for when we get to the end of a sequence and the beginning of sequence token. And this is going to ensure that our model retains and emits this end of sequence token so it knows when to stop blabbing on. All right, so we have our data set. We have the base model, which is going to be this one here. And we're going to go ahead now and fine tune it. You can use Google Colab or you can use RunPod. I'm just going to log into RunPod here, go to Secure Cloud. I'm going to pick an A6000. This will be sufficient, definitely for 7B, probably 13B as well. Now, make sure that you have enough space on the device. So select, um, I like to just put in a lot of memory so I've got room to spare and I'm never forced to shut down. Uh, set the overrides, continue, and then click on to deploy. Once the kernel has started, I've opened up Jupyter Notebook using the direct link in RunPod. Again, you can run this in Google Collab if you like. And here I have my chat fine tuning script. This will be available for purchase in the description below. Also, you can purchase access to a repository containing all of the fine tuning scripts of the Trellis videos, supervised fine tuning, unsupervised. There's even quantization scripts and data preparation scripts for fine tuning as well. You can get all of those scripts um, for a discounted price versus buying them individually. So we'll move through our script here for fine tuning uh, for chat format. I'm just going to show you some of the highlights. Should be enough though, if you want to set it up yourself. First off, we're loading the model. You can see here that the model is Llama 2, 7B and the hugging face type. I'm actually not loading it in quantized form. You can see here I've commented out the quantization form. I did have some issues trying to get chat fine tuning to work well when I had quantization on. Um, so I've turned that off and I'm going for um, a fine tune that does not involve quantization. Next, we have uh, the LoRa setup. The modules that I'm targeting are the attention modules, so Q, K, V, and O. So I'm not fine tuning all of the modules. I think you could, but um, it works fine the way I have it set up. Next, we're going to set up the tokenizer. Um, I've defined a pad token here that will allow me to have sequences of different length uh, to input a block of those sequences and the shorter ones will just be padded with the pad tokens. Moving on, um, I've set up a simple evaluation here and asked some basic questions. What planets are in our solar system? First five numbers of Fibonacci and write a Python code snippet to add two numbers. Then I run an evaluation on the model. And this gives you a great example of what Llama base model does if you've not fine-tuned it for chat. When I ask what planets are in our solar system, it uh, responds with some questions rather than responding with the answer. When I ask about the first five numbers in the Fibonacci series, it responds with a date and then with another question and this inst. So it's, it's not familiar with this inf inst formatting, which makes sense. Um, you can see, though, it does emit this end-of-sequence token because the base Llama model has been trained, including these end of sequence tokens. And again, here, when I ask to generate a code snippet, it responds with more requests rather than actually giving a code snippet. Next up, I load the data set, which is that data set I've prepared and uh, you can access here. It's the Open Assistant Llama style data set. You can see a little sample. It's got the inst in it here, and then it has a question. And maybe if we scroll down, you can see that there is an end of sequence token here included as well, which is how I've modified the data set. Okay, moving on down here, we'll get to training. And I'm using 
a supervised uh, fine tuning SFT trainer. Um, somewhat confusingly, maybe this is considered unsupervised fine tuning. The reason is because I'm actually just feeding in a stream of text and all of the tokens are being considered for the loss calculation and the back propagation. So what I've done is I've prepared my text to include all the required tokens. Often if you're doing supervised fine tuning, you would do the preparation of the text within the script itself here, and you would focus the loss function on the response. Um, so this is kind of a, a quick and effective way to get a chat style formatting, but using an unsupervised method. So I have this uh, TRL trainer that's been set up. I find that just training for one epoch is sufficient. This data set is about uh, how many samples? About 10,000 rows of data. So training for one epoch I find works well. So we will kick off that training and once it's run through, I'm going to run some samples. I'll just first show you a graph of the progression of the training. Here you can see the training loss is reducing and the evaluation loss, it's only calculated first at 12 steps, but I've done it before. The, the, train, the eval loss drops down and then it starts to plateau. And you can see by the time we get to one epoch, there's not much more improvement in the training loss. It's quite a smooth and tidy training though. This is quite a good result. Now we can evaluate um, 60 is the end of one epoch. So I'll just show you some examples at 24. So even after 24 steps out of 60, um, you can see there's not much improvement here in the first question. The second question is answered perfectly. Um, not only does it give the correct five, it also responds with an end of sequence token. And the last question is not answered correctly at all. Moving on to 48, which is just past the uh, three quarters mark. The first question is answered beautifully. The second question, it now blabs on with numbers. It doesn't end the sequence in time. And the third question, it answers reasonably well. Maybe there's a little extra white space towards the end, but pretty good. And then by the time we get to one epoch, we have a good answer here on the planets. We have a good answer on the Fibonacci series, and we have a good answer on the Python code. So you can see the training for one epoch, if you use a data set uh, like this one here, gives excellent results. Just some pro tips for those of you that are doing some chat fine tuning. You'll find that if your base model has been pre-trained using BOS and EOS tokens, it makes it much easier to get a good chat format. There's a really cool model that's being trained right now called Tiny Llama. It's a 1.1 billion parameter model. You can find one of my videos on it and you can find Tiny Llama on GitHub. But the project itself, it has used a data set that does not include an end of sequence token in the raw training. And I can just show you what that looks like when you get to the results. So when you fine tune a Tiny Llama, you see again a similar graph whereby the training loss drops and then smoothens and the eval loss does likewise. But even after training for one epoch here, and I'm using uh, smaller batches, so 120 here is still one epoch. When I ask a question like what planets are in our solar system, um, the model still blabs on and it doesn't have the ability to emit a final S token. I'm not entirely sure if that's just because of pre-training, although I know that pre-training did not include an end of sequence token, so I suspect that's an effect. The fact that the model is smaller as well means it's less powerful, so that could be contributing. But to me, this is evidence that if you are going to chat fine tune, it's really nice if you can have pre-trained using the beginning of sequence tokens and the end of sequence tokens to stop the models from blabbing on. That's it for chat fine tuning. Let me know of any questions below in the comments. I'll put a link to the data set that I used right below. You should be able to set it up with a fairly basic trainer to convert your model into chat format. You can also check out the scripts for purchase below if you want to follow along step by step or access the full repo that now has a wide range of fine tuning, data preparation, embedding, and quantization scripts. See you soon, folks.